Hey, what's up my peoples? I'm back with another action figure video review, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars SH Figure Arts Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan Kenobi. So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we're going to take a quick look at the packaging. So, here it is, you got Star Wars and SH Figure Arts, and the description of SH Figure Arts written in gold, um, and it basically just describes the SH Figure Arts line. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, um, Bandai Spirits, apparently it's Bandai Spirits now instead of just Bandai, Tomashi Nations and designed by Tomashi Nations in Japan, Bandai Spirits May, uh, 2019 made in China, yada yada yada. On the top, pretty much nothing but Star Wars, SH Figure Arts, logos, yeah. On this side, you got Star Wars and the sticker of um, quality from Bandai, which uh, I do. I am glad that they're putting these on the box. That way, you can tell which is a knockoff and which is the real thing. So, and on this side, you got a good picture or a good view of Obi Wan right there. Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, SH Figure Arts, and there's the bio of what SH Figure Arts is all about. If you want to read it, Disney, Lucasfilm, blah, 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 blah. On the back of the box, you got your promo pics, and uh, you got him fighting Anakin, and his stance there and there, and you do get two heads, and probably says something like, warning. Um, if you buy this action figure, he may get the high ground over you. Um, so, and not much more at the bottom. And that's basically it for the packaging. So moving right along, here we have Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this figure is one of my favorites of this year so far. Love it. <laughs> I just love this figure. Um, so... Let's get into it right away and take a look at that noggin. Let me just zoom in real quick. Okay, there we go. And I think this is the easiest I've had um, my camera focus on focus in on a uh, face uh, a face sculpt. So, but yeah, it does look like Ewan McGregor. I mean, it it at least looks similar to him. Um, but yeah. Very good likeness to Ewan McGregor. Um, you got some tan plastic and... Excuse me. I think this brown section is painted on. But a uh, very nice sculpt and paint nonetheless. You got his belt. You got the... Um, uh, let me move his arms out a bit. Uh, you do get the lightsaber. Uh, his lightsaber hilt, which for some reason has a D-ring on it when this was not present in the Clone Wars era. So I don't know why the hilt has a D-ring on it and a peg, but, you know, hey, whatever. <laughs> you do get the uh, the black holster for the uh, hilt, though, and you can just peg it on like so. And it attaches nice and securely, and you can kind of angle it however you want. Then you do get some nice gold for the buckle and the buttons. You got some nice silver right there. Some more silver and gold. You got the pouches for holding some supply bars or some credits or, you know, just whatever you need on your Jedi adventures. Then moving down, he has pants and dem boots. So there you have that. Nice shading on them too. Like I, I, I dig the shading on the uh, boots. As you can see, like it goes from lighter up here to kind of a darker shade down here. I dig that a lot. Really like the boots on this guy. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there's not really anything I have to complain about with this guy. I mean, he's really, really cool. Um, as far as accessories go, he does have um, 
this uh, this head and you can interchange it just attaches via a ball hinge type joint I don't know why they went with this instead of a double ball peg I kind of wish they went with the double ball peg but at the same time I'm okay with this because I'm used to it with um, C3PO and um, here it is you kind of have to make sure you get it lined up there we go and then you have this head where he's like you are the chosen one that that came out very bad I am sorry but but um yeah this is your uh it's over Anakin I have the high ground kind of face or the you were the chosen one type face so yeah still uh, still nice paint and sculpt um uh I am just thankful that the eyes on mine are straight at least for the most part if not dead on straight because someone in the SH Figure Arts Star Wars group on Facebook, the eyes on this face, at least, was like all messed up. And I'm like, ooh, I feel bad for him. Hopefully he could get a replacement though. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, sometimes I get bad luck with, <clears throat> Jesus, that's a snug fit. I mean, sometimes I get, um, bad QC as far as like face paint goes but um and sometimes it's not even bad QC it's just the eyes aren't um you know straight so but yeah you can just interchange both of these heads so there you have that and then we do get his unlit lightsaber hilt which does have some great sculpt work and paint work. Uh, you do get some silver and black. I think it's casted in a black plastic and then the silver and gold are painted on, but I could be wrong. I don't know for sure, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, and then you do get a lit lightsaber, which does have the same kind of paint and sculpt. It just doesn't have that gigantic peg and the hilt, or the, uh, well, yeah, the hilt does come apart so that you can put it in uh, the uh, closed gripped lightsaber holding hands, or hand. Um, then you do get the blade, which is a nice transclearance blue plastic. But I will say, I'm with Bobby Skullface on this when I say if they would just find a way, at least look into a... A white piece of plastic going into the blue to make it look like it was glowing that would look cool that would look really really cool like at, at first I thought it, it was a terrible uh, idea but I didn't know what he meant at the time but I, I agree that would look so cool um, with a, a piece of white plastic going up from the center of the blade up to make a, a nice glowing effect that would have been sick or at least include an alternate blade so that you have the option so there you have that and then we do get 10 alternate hands so we do get a pair of fists of course which do come on the figure out of the packaging and they're a nice sculpt you know nothing too crazy to write home about but they are nicely done so we do get a pair of fists and then we do get two closed uh, lightsaber holding hands which are nice they are again nicely sculpted nicely painted or I think they have some paint on them so there you have these and then we do get uh, two open gripped lightsaber holding hands. So I guess if you're having uh, one of the um, closed gripped hands, you could use one of the open gripped hands to get a two handed lightsaber holding pose, which I do dig. Um, you know, very nice 
uh, sculpt work. And like I said, I think there's some paint work as well, but if there is, it's very subtle. But there you have these lightsaber gripping hands. And then we do get a pair of force pushing hands. Which are a very nice, nicely sculpted. So there you have that. So there you have that. And then you do get a uh, poking of the eyes or just a hand for his famous stance. I forget what it's called. I think it's Form 2, maybe Form 5. I don't know. Probably Form 2. I, I don't know for sure. But, um, again, nice. Uh, or you can use it as a peace sign or... Or bunny ears if you want to be goofy about it but um but yeah nice paint nice sculpt and then you get a Jedi mind trick hand so you can have him uh, so you can have him doing these these are not the droids you're looking for uh, or something like you can have him say these are not the droids you're looking for um, in a earlier age so there you go so yeah, that is all of the accessories for Obi-Wan. Oh, and how you interchange the hands. Very simple. You just uh, you just pop them off. They are on a the usual ball hinge type joint. And then you could take, uh, let's take a force using hand. And you could just pop it on. I don't think I've uh, used the force, the force pushing hands, but yeah. But yeah, you you can you can get that look going on for you. Just kind of pushing something, or if you rotate the hand around, you can have him lift something with the force, or you can say, or you can have him go take my hand. So yeah, yeah, there you have that. Um, and they do swap very easily. I think they're like a a softish type plastic, which I do like. It um, definitely helps interchanging the hands. But uh, overall, um, I do very much like the, um, I love the head sculpts. I love just the overall paint and detail. Uh, here's the back of him in case um, I forgot to show it off. And then he does not have anything to ride home about at the bottom of his feet. So there we go. Now let's zoom out for some size comparisons. And then we'll jump into articulation and wrap this up. So here he is with his former Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. And I do have his hips extended, but we'll just collapse him down for a little bit and I think they still work even with his hips collapsed down, but I think his hips being extended work even better because Hayden Christensen is taller than um, uh, Ewan McGregor. I think Hayden Christensen is supposed to be like six foot and then uh, Ewan McGregor is like six, uh, not six foot, dum dum, uh, five foot, uh, five foot ten, maybe. But yeah, there you go. And here they are with a Black Series Battle Droid because I did replace, uh, or I didn't replace them yet, but I um, I did sell my SH Figure Arts Battle Droids because I thought these were more fun to pose. Not fun to stand, but more fun to pose. Did I say not fun to pose? I meant to say fun to pose. Anyway, there you go. So there you have them. Um, here he is with my custom Bandai R4P17, because R4 is, in fact, Obi-Wan's co-pilot, and I think they look great together.
I love this. It's a little reunion. Droid and Master. So, but yeah, she looks cute uh, standing next to him. I, I dig this. I, I really do like this, so. But uh, before we move R4 out of frame, let's just bring in Clone Commander Cody. So we'll put Obi-Wan over here, Cody over here, and of course R4 in front, because she's the shortest. But yeah. No, look at him. Look at him. Ah, so cute. Especially with R4, because she's adorable. But yeah, there you have them. So there's Cody, R4, RIP, rest her soul, her mechanical soul. Because the buzz droids ripped her, off, uh, ripped her head off. But, um, <laughs> yeah. And here he is with SHF R2D2. It's the A New Hope version, but still. And here he is with Clone Captain Rex, just because. Here he is with Padme from the Black Series. And um, here he is with, let me get him, uh, let me stand him up real quick. Here he is with Mace Windu. And his hips are not extended, they are collapsed. And you know what, we'll bring Anakin back in for a sec. Because my brother did tell me that Samuel L. Jackson and Hayden Christensen are both six foot. But I could be wrong. Um, I haven't looked it up. But I think these guys uh, look good together. I dig it. Um, here he is with a Power of the Jedi Mega Action Destroyer Droid. And we'll bring in Bandai Model Kit General Grievous. So even with Grievous hunched over, he's still taller than Obi-Wan, which is awesome. Because that's how it should be. That's, Grievous should be taller than Obi-Wan. So there you have them. Uh, for the heck of it, here he is with Figma Tracer. And someone who he crosses paths in, uh, with in my little fanon universe where everything crosses over into one big universe. Here he is with Batman. And again, for the heck of it, here he is with S.H. Figure Arts Wonder Woman. So there you have him with them. And as far as DC villains go, here he is with Joker and Harley Quinn. And because I reviewed her, re reviewed her recently and she's in the review station, there he is with Figma Widowmaker. So yeah, and I believe he's even shorter than Widowmaker, which I find pretty cool. I mean, it's not like Widowmaker is the tallest character in Overwatch, but still. I dig it. I dig it very much. So yeah, um... I think now we can jump into articulation. So, um, let's uh, move the lightsaber hilt uh, away just so that it's not in the way. <laughs> but um, the head can look up that far and just the head alone, he can kind of look down but you're gonna get more movement out of the neck, so combining both joints looks up that far, doesn't look much further than that because the the, the uh, back of his robes get in the way of his neck. 
but you do get uh, some good downward movement. So if we bring R4 back in, you can have him looking at her. Like that. So there you go. So you can have that going on. Um, and then you can, uh, he has some head pivot at the uh, neck, which is really good. Now, you do have to, like with C-3PO and some of the other Obi-Wans, you do have to uh, take the head off, turn the joint around, and then pop the head back on to get more tilt. And with that, you get very nice tilting. But honestly, I... Release! I do prefer to um, keep the uh, joint in the um, up and down motion. Because I just feel like that's more useful to me. But, you know, it's your toy. Do what you want with it. Um, the shoulders are, I believe, on a butterfly joint that a ball peg plugs into, then comes out to a, um, a, uh, ball hinge. So, you do get forward and back, which is nice. So, you, you can get it, the arms to go that far forward, that far back, and, um, if I... Arm, let's stay awake. But yeah, you can get that far back, that far forward, and then you can shift the shoulders up and down. And then you do have rotation, and then you can move them out uh, just shy of 90 degrees. Um, maybe 90, but maybe just a little shy of 90. So there you have that. Um, you do have a bicep swivel, and it only shows one, but you technically have a double jointed elbow, because it's a ball peg, and you can see it in there, there's a ball peg coming out to a ball hinge, and the ball hinge part of it is exposed. So with both joints, you could get that far of a elbow bend, but if you're trying to preserve the, uh, the sculpt, you're gonna get about maybe just shy of past 90 degrees, but still, uh, still some really good el elbow movement. You do get up and down motion at the wrist, or you can turn it and, manip and manipulate it to go in and out, whichever you want for your uh, shelf display or your photos. Uh, the torso can move forward that much, back eh, a little bit, but uh, the forward definitely helps for uh, like uh, poses more than the back, so I'm good with that. Little bit of pivot, it's a little squeaky too. Re remember this with Anakin? <laughs> and then you do get some swivel. And you can turn his uh, waist all the way around to either side, ooh, if you want. Do be careful because that sounded like it was starting to get really stiff and you don't want to break it. Um, that's just if you're going all the way around. If you're not, you're going to be fine. Um, the legs are on a slight drop down joint, like. This is like as slight as it gets, but it allows you to kick forward, eh, maybe slightly over 90, if that. But yeah, that forward, or that much forward. Uh, back, barely. And then you do want to make sure your robes are nice and neat. And then outward, he cannot do the full splits, but still, still good for uh, for some poses. And then you do get a ball hinged knee, 
which gets you past 90, which is good. Um, and then, uh, I will say though, the knees are a little loose on mine. So, I don't know if you'll have the same issue. So, do be aware of that uh, if you decide to buy this figure. And you can wiggle the shin if you need to, and maybe not. Eh, not really the where it connects into the leg, but yeah. Knee bend, very good. Um, ankles move up that far, down barely, but um, you do get some great ankle pivot. In fact, it breaks up the sculpt quite a bit. And you can see it's a ball joint going to a hinge? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, um, it's a bit hard to see, but it is a ball joint coming down to a hinge, like an old school rocker. <clears throat> like an old school rocker type thing. And then you do get a really good toe hinge. So overall, you can get Obi-Wan into some really good uh, poses, so I will put him in one for final thoughts. So there you go, there you have Revenge of the Sith, SH Figure Arts, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, honestly, like, I can't really find anything to complain about. I mean, I, I really enjoy, <clears throat> I really enjoy this figure. Um, I do it, the only real gripe I have is I really wish that the, um, it was a double ball peg. That way I wouldn't have to manipulate the, uh, the head joint around if I needed some head tilting. But otherwise, that's really it. I can't really think of anything else to, you know, I, I, I can't really find anything else to, uh, uh, say that's really wrong with the figure. Um, I don't know why they went with that uh, ball joint on a ball hinge. Excuse me, sorry, I'm bumping the camera. But, um, I mean, it's not hateful. I don't hate it. I just wish that it was a double ball peg. Um, so, but um, other than that, I really don't have any complaints with this guy. He is really cool. As you can see, he displays well with General Grievous. So if you want to have him dueling it out on your shelf, you can do that. You can totally do that. <clears throat> if my voice would work, you can totally do that. It's, um, it's really cool. Now, I do want to replace my Bandai Kit Grievous with the Black Series, so I will be doing a review on that when I get him, and I will definitely show the size between not only the Bandai Kit and the Black Series, but also uh, Obi-Wan with the Black Series Grievous. So, um, yeah. So there you go, there you have the SH Figure Arts Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan Kenobi. And um, I think we're gonna uh, take a break from Star Wars. Well, actually we haven't done many Star Wars things, but uh, I think we're gonna go back to DC for one last time, at least for the time being. And um, yeah, if not, I'll just do some more Star Wars and then go back to DC, but um, <laughs> Anyway, um, I will see you in the next video. Oh, one more thing. I do highly recommend this if you are an Obi-Wan fan, if you're a prequel fan, or if you're just a Star Wars fan in general.